Here it is, the all new 2022 Tesla Model X Plaid. Now, I was gonna start this video off by just comparing and contrasting this to the previous generation. The reality is this is an entirely new vehicle. Everything is different, every single piece. The only thing this shares in common with the pre-refresh Model X is the name. In fact, almost every piece of this car is brand new from the battery pack, the cooling system, the heating and air conditioning system, which now uses a heat pump, the interior, the seats, the GPU, every single element. Now, if you're not familiar with me, my name's Brian Lovett. This is my third Model X. I had a 2018 pre-Raven Model X. I had a 2021 Performance Model X, and now the Plaid. All right, we'll get this out of the way first. The yoke, I talked a lot of trash about the yoke right when this car came out. I thought it was such a gimmicky, weird thing, and it's okay, it's fine. I actually got used to it in probably the first five miles of driving. It's more intuitive than you think. For all the people that are kind of over hand over hand flailing about when they're trying to drive this thing, I'm sorry, but they're idiots. And I get why they went with this design. This car is so powerful and fast, you actually want to hold on to the wheel in the proper place, 10 and two. It's also, I will argue easier to use than a round wheel in most situations because this bottom piece is flat. So you're actually able to simply push this way instead of having to grip. It's actually pretty easy to use. Even at low speeds, I haven't had any problems with it. That's out of the way. I will never talk about the yoke again. So let's talk a little bit about specs. This has slightly less range than the outgoing 2021 Tesla Model X. My performance model at 343 miles of range. This one has about 215. Has an entirely new battery pack design. They actually change the way the modules are laid out. They change the cooling system, but that has a lot of really big benefits. And that's part of what gives this car 1,020 horsepower. Yes, we'll say that once again, 1,020 horsepower. And it's a six passenger SUV. It doesn't make any sense. This thing feels like an untamed bear that's trying to rip its way out to eat you alive. With that other way, there are no stocks here, you'll notice. So they've changed things. It's all done on the touch screen. The car has a predictive AI that uses the cameras and tries to say which direction you wanna go. If you're pointed it forward, but there's an obstacle in the way, the car will put itself into reverse. Now, it's easy to override. You just swipe up or down while you're holding the brake pedal. It's super intuitive it's actually faster and easier than using a stock i actually really like what tesla did there and with that let's get on the road and actually test this thing out a little bit most of the controls are going to be familiar if you've had a tesla before one of the differences since there's no stocks is that for the turn signals you actually just press here these left and right arrows and it actually sets up the car to turn left and right now the interesting thing is i thought initially okay if i turn this on and i'm going to the right how does it know when i've finished uh, but it's actually really intuitive. It knows because of the autopilot cameras once you've switched lanes. So if I put it left and get into the next lane, it automatically turns off once I've completed my lane change. So again, everything about this car is highly intelligent, highly predictive of the types of things that you're going to be doing. The other thing we'll take note of is if you're coming from a previous generation Model X, this has entirely new sound deadening. It has double pane glass. It has all of the things you would expect from a higher end luxury vehicle, and it's much, much quieter in the interior cabin than previous generation Teslas, which is a nice welcome change. On the technology front, I'm so glad they finally went to a horizontal layout for the screen. This is a high resolution screen. It's 17 inch, which it's also embedded into the dash. So it looks like it's not just an iPad stuck to the car, kind of like the Model 3 and Model Y. No offense, guys, but it's really what's underneath that's impressive. This actually has a quad-core Ryzen processor and a Navi 32 GPU from AMD. The AMD GPU, in fact, puts this on par with something like a PlayStation 5 as far as its graphical performance. This has about 10 teraflops of processing power. So the rumor is that Steam is going to come to the app center here, and you'll be actually be able to play a lot of the Steam games. We've already seen demos of Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. So I expect this to be a gaming powerhouse, which makes sense once you have a vehicle that's 
fully capable of driving itself. Now, one of the big complaints about Tesla in the past was the fact that as the battery lost its charge, you actually lost performance. You had to be above about 75 or 80% state of charge in order to reach peak performance. And then it dropped off pretty drastically, even in my 2021 Model X. Now, so far from what I've noticed here and what I've seen from others online, this doesn't seem to suffer that problem. And I think it's that new cooling system that Tesla has created for these battery packs. This is at about 50% state of charge right now. And we're gonna do a couple performance tests. I actually brought my Draggy and we're gonna do a couple of zero to 60 runs. I'm not going to do a quarter mile pass because that is completely unsafe on city streets. This will run a nine seven quarter mile at about 145. It has a claimed zero to 60 time of 2.6 seconds, which puts it in hypercar territory. But I've also seen a couple people, even on the street tires, get a 2.3 second zero to 60. Here's a misconception a lot of people have about Teslas. They think that you always have to warm up the battery pack in order to get performance. But the fact is that simply going over here to pedals and steering, you can have the car in plaid mode all the time. You're always going to get an insane level of performance. I have put it in drag strip mode, which does precondition the battery. That gives you things like launch control and a little bit extra performance, but to tell you the truth, in plaid mode, it is terrifyingly fast. Oh my God. Oh, this car is so incredibly fast. All right, let's merge. That was 70. <laughs> My God. I... <laughs> you can't really prepare for this. Um, <laughs> how do you explain this to somebody that hasn't experienced it? I, I don't quite know. It's, again, it's, it's like the wheels and tires are just ripping the pavement off of the ground. There's so much power and acceleration here. I've been in a lot of fast cars. I owned a 2021 Performance Model X, and that thing was ridiculously fast. You could say ludicrously fast, and this puts it to shame. And I'll tell you why. It's not just the zero to 60. Yes, that's breathtaking, breathtakingly fast. You feel yourself rise up out of your seat as you leave the gravitational pull of the earth. But that's not it. It's really the 50 to 100, 100 plus, that's impressive in this vehicle. And that's because it has three motors now, two in the rear and one in the front. It's capable of torque vectoring or applying different levels of power to each of the rear wheels so that you can actually steer the vehicle with the torque of the motors. The other trick Tesla has up its sleeve for this is that they're actually carbon fiber wrapped rotors. That means that unlike all of the previous Teslas that came before it, this one doesn't die out in the top end. It actually just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling with 1,020 horsepower. All right, here's the zero to 60. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's that's ter that's terrifying. Zero to sixty in two point seven two seconds. Now that's just on a regular stretch of road. It's kind of some broken pavement. Uh, this absolutely easily will hit. 2.6 here's the thing 2.70 to 60 and that's with i'm at half battery i am at literally 50 percent charge right now this is bananas and it here's the thing that's really crazy about this car it's it's a six passenger suv it will completely destroy a porsche turbo s it will completely destroy a lamborghini huracan evo and yet i can still go on a road trip I get over 300 miles of range. I can fast charge it. I can haul groceries and luggage and skis and tons and tons of other things.
I, th I think we've reached a point where it, it can't really get any better than this. I, you know, I always joke that, you know, there's no amount of power in a car that's too much. Any car can always have more horsepower. I don't think you want more than this. This is already, I think this is the peak. I don't know where we go from here, but man, Tesla's really outdone themselves. The fit and finish of this car is superb. The interior choices they made, the changes they made, the decisions they made, everything's soft touch materials. It's much higher end feeling than the outgoing Model X. You have heated and cooled seats. All the creature comforts you could ever possibly want are here. So what are some other things that you might not initially notice? They've got this beautiful screen here in the back, which you can use to control things like the air, which uh, amazing as it is, the, the vents are actually hidden under here. I don't know if you can see those there, but you can actually just drag and move them around as you need. The rear passengers can set their temperature and fan and everything else, even their seat heaters and coolers independently of the front. That's right, even the rear seats and the very, very rear seats have both heated and cooled seats. So apart from that, you've got media. So you can either control the radio or you can come in here and you can go to arcade, YouTube, whatever, and you can just pull up your YouTube videos, watch all your tech, your favorite YouTube channels, whatever you want to do while driving independently of the screen in the front. Other changes, the car now has USB-C all around. You've still got the rear cup holder, although I'm told that the Plaid is the only one that has this interesting texture inside of here, but I can't confirm that. You'll notice that the center row pillar vents are gone, but again, that's been replaced by this center console that allows the air to be redirected however they want. However, in the third row, you do still have the rear vents that were there previously. In addition, you have these little coat hooks that pop down. Now, what about the back and the rear storage? You'll notice there's this kind of cutout section here on the left, which is nice. There's also one on the right, but this has a light. Your 12 volt outlet has actually been moved here. And then it's got this little netted cubby, which is cool. Now, one thing I just noticed is this section here actually pops out and then, oh, wow, this goes all the way down. I mean, it was down to my elbow. So that goes down a good couple feet. You've also, of course, got the normal rear space here, which folds up. And I noticed something a little different. You can also put it down another level and check that out. It gives you an extra, I would say six inches of space downward, which the previous Model X did not allow for. Another thing to note, just minor details, they changed this to kind of a, a matte black color. This used to be silver on all the previous Model Xs. Moving to the body, of course, you know, you have the plaid badge, you have this different rear diffuser. This is where the trailer hitch mount goes. This just pops right off. The interior of the wheel wells is actually different, and that's something I think most reviewers aren't going to notice. But this used to be all felt inside of here, and now this bottom piece is actually plastic and it's in a slightly different shape. The other thing you'll notice is the front end is actually quite a bit different. There used to be a cutout here where you had a set of lights. Those have now been replaced by this. There's no more the chrome strips that go side to side. There's an ultrasonic sensor here, which is interesting. And then you've got these vents, which you can see right through. Those go to the wheel wells. Now, this Model X is equipped with the optional 22 inch wheels, which are actually aero wheels. You'll notice these covers here, these actually pop off and expose a larger wheel. I think they look quite good and I think I'm gonna leave them on there for the little bit extra range. Moving on to the frunk, not much has changed here. It is a slightly different shape. The bottom used to be flat or close to flat. This one actually has a little bit of a contour to it. And then up front, there's not only a release for the trunk or the frunk, there's also this extra piece for a tow hook. Other minor exterior details, they've now defaulted to having 
black trim all around the car. You see the door panels are completely new and different. You still have the built-in carbon fiber. They now have this nice chrome trim piece here. Everything just flows a little bit nicer. You've got soft touch materials everywhere, even on the inside of the door panels. These side pieces here are also soft touch. It just has a much more premium feel than the previous Model X did. On the door handle side, it's actually a push button now here. You'll see you press this and it pops open. Now, what happens if you have no battery power or something else? There's this quick release right here, which you can simply pull up and that also releases and opens the door. Now, this center console is one of the bigger changes as well. Now you have these two mats right here, which I'll say are amazing because they're inductive chargers for your phone. So you can now charge two phones simultaneously. It's also at enough of an angle to where even if you do a launch in plaid mode, your phone doesn't go flying. Nothing goes flying anymore. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So you've got this, this carbon fiber deck lid here. This opens up and there's this storage area in here. Now, this also opens up. There's additional storage underneath, which is quite large. And then the cup holders, those actually slide back as well. So you can conceivably open up this entire section and have this huge storage area. You have this storage area and then of course the cup holders. It's a pretty nifty design. The one thing I do think is kind of weird is that with it all closed, you still have, there's this kind of gap. It'd be nice if there was another section here that came out and met this so that you could just close this whole thing. Or if this, oh, never mind. This actually goes all the way back. I didn't actually know that. I take it back. You learn something new every day. Now on top of that, this center armrest lifts up and there's another huge storage area here. Amazing. Now here are a couple extra cool things. The car, again, since it has Bluetooth connectivity throughout, which the old Model S and Model X did not, and it has self-presenting doors, you can actually go to controls in the app, and you can open and close the doors via the phone. Now, previous generation Model X, you had to use a key fob. Now, you can use your phone for every control of the vehicle. You no longer need to carry around a fob. As you can see, the list of changes with this car really goes on and on. I'll do a follow-up video as I discover more nifty little tricks and tips, but for now, Tesla really knocked it out of the park with this car. It's really holds up to its namesake as the Fabergé egg. And on top of that, really the only thing this shares in common with the old Model X is the name. It still has that same performance pedigree, but man, they just took it to another level. This is an entirely new vehicle and it's something that's really exciting to see from Tesla. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions I can help answer about the refreshed 2022 Tesla Model X. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks.